So these are the five principles that I'm going to hope uh, you'll think about during this presentation. These are things that I think are practical things we can do in our classrooms that the Chinese are doing, and the research shows that these things can uh, help our students learn better. And I'm going to give some examples of these things. So um, because I focus in math education, my examples are going to come from math ed. But is everybody here a math teacher, or, or do we have some elementary? Elementary. Does anybody here not teach mathematics? A couple of you, what do you, what do you folks teach? Science and social studies. Science and social studies? Okay. I'm an administrator. You're an administrator? Yeah, okay. I'm an advanced math teacher. Okay. Well, the reason I'm saying that is because um, I'm going to be focusing on the content of math, but the principles can apply to any subject. They're not math specific. Okay. The first principle is to let students talk. Let students talk about their ideas. Typically, the research shows that American teachers, about 80% of the classroom dialogue is the teacher talking, which you know, kind of makes sense because we're delivering the content. Um, are you sending me a message? Or are you just listening? Oh, no, no. Just okay. um, so the first principle is we need to let students talk more about their ideas. A second principle is once a student has talked about their ideas and they're right and we're like, oh, that's a great you know, answer, to not move on in the lesson quite yet. Ask other students for other ideas because there's going to be this flowering of student thinking. Much of it is correct and it gives a breadth and a depth to instruction that will benefit all the students. In a way, you can deal with this idea of differentiated learning by allowing the students to share their diverse ideas. And that will help students. It's not like you're the teacher having to go out and you know, tailor your lesson to all these different learning styles or something. But by having students talk about their different ideas, a variety of things, kids are tuned in. And they'll listen to what their peers are saying. Um, a third principle, very simple, but it's hard to do, is to organize our board work better. Uh, if you use smart boards to think about the, how those ideas are laid out. And I'm going to show some examples in a second, what I mean by that. The fourth thing is to think about posing a variety of problems rather than providing a step-by-step -step scaffolding for students. And finally, is to utilize what I call collective teachers during teaching. So I capitalize that because I'm going to argue that there are special teachers in our classrooms that we're not even aware of. We think we're the teacher when we're in the classroom. But there's other teachers that we can harness, we can recognize and use their powers, not students. And I'm going to talk about what that is. Okay, so these, th my, my talk is pretty much focused on these five things. And uh, I'm going to give some examples from, uh, I'm going to show uh, some, some video clips from a lesson, two lessons, taught by, one, one lesson was taught by a Chinese teacher, and one lesson was taught by an American teacher. And the reason these videos are unique is because they're taught to Chinese students. So the American teacher is teaching his lesson to Chinese students. Both lessons are taught in English. So um, this gets rid of the fact that a lot of times teachers will be like, well, you know, I could teach differently if I was maybe teaching over there with Asian students, right? If I had better students maybe or less discipline problems. Um, so that kind of eliminates that variable. So it's going to be an example of an American teacher teaching in China and a Chinese teacher. They're teaching the same topic. Um, it's geometric probability. 